thinking, yes. This is a 3D image of a brain, as you can see, and um, our brain is split into two hemispheres, or the left and the right side, we call this the left and the right hemisphere. And um, um, if I just explain a little bit about what stroke is, and then I'll tell you some about, something about the techniques we use to investigate it. So, um, stroke affects around 150,000 people in the UK per year, and it's the leading cause of complex disability. So obviously it's a huge problem that we need to understand more and um, try and understand and use this to improve therapies. Um, so what is a stroke? A stroke is basically when a blood vessel becomes blocked in the brain. And this can either happen due to a clot forming in the brain, or it can be due to a blood vessel bursting and causing a bleed on the brain, but this is more rare. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you the NHS campaign some of you may have seen um, on TV or on posters, and the acronym is FARP. So this is about some of the symptoms you might see during stroke and some of the uh, what you need to do if you see these. So in this case, F is for face, so half of the face may droop. Um, a is for arms, one of the arms may become limp and they're unable to lift it themselves. Um, S is for speech, their speech may become affected and their words may become slurred. And then in this case, T is for time. So if you see any of these previous three symptoms, it's very important to call 999 and get this person to a hospital immediately. And the reason that it's so important that you uh, get them to a hospital within a certain time window is that then they'll be able to be thrombolized, which basically means giving them drugs to thin the blood so that they can get blood pumping back to this area as soon as possible. Um, so we look at movement after stroke and how people recover their movement um, using brain injury techniques. And we also uh, measure this using various different behavioral tests so we can score how they're recovering. Now this is a video of uh, one of our patients performing what we call the nine hole peg test. So it's quite a simple task. You just have to put these nine pegs into the grid as fast as you can and it's timed. Um, so in this case, you can see on the right hand side with his left hand, he's performing the task as normal. And then on the left hand side, his right hand has been affected by a stroke. So you can see that he's still able to do the task, but it's a lot slower. Um, his fingers are a lot more stiff and he finds it difficult to move them individually. And this is very common after stroke. So um, often the shoulder and the arms come back uh, quickly. And then the more complex movements take a longer time to come back and involve more retraining. Um, so the therapy for after stroke, um, there, there are many different forms. There's a lot of physiotherapy and also uh, training exercises for the patients to do on their own. Um, but also individuals find it uh, useful to, to do art sometimes in therapy, either, either as a hobby or as part of their therapy. And it's sort of a nice instruction. So we've had a couple of our patients who are actually here um, to send us some of their art. So we're going to have a little gallery time. Um, so this is Paul, who's in the audience. Can you give us a wave, Paul? Where are we? So there he is. <laughs> um, so this is Paul, one of our patients, and um, he had a stroke in May 2011. And whilst in hospital, uh, Paul wanted to have something he could do independently in between visiting hours and his other therapy. Um, and so he started drawing the first copy of art cards that his wife brought in, uh, which he was able to copy very well. Um, and if we look at the primary motor cortex in more detail, 
So this is kind of a, a, a slice through the brain this way, and the primary motor cortex is from here down to here on your brain. Um, and you can see this organized according to different body parts. So up here we have the, the legs and the torso, and then as we go around to the outside of the brain, we have the hands and the face here. Um, and as you can see, the hands and the face are much larger area of the brain in comparison to the rest of the body. And this is, if you think about it, we do a lot more complex movements with our fingers and with our hands and, and all the different muscles for our facial expression. So they need to take up a larger area of the brain in order to perform all these complex movements. So we're able to look at this um, reorganization after stroke using different techniques. Um, and there's sort of two types. There's one which is functional. So we can look at um, the areas that are active during movement. So we put someone in a brain scan, we get them to perform a movement, and we see which areas light up, basically. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into that today, but what I am going to talk about is structural imaging. So we can look at the structure of the brain after stroke and how that informs us about how someone might recover. So, back one. Okay. So this is, uh, you may have seen these before, maybe not. This is a structural MRI of two different patients, um, and it's sort of a slice through the brain this way, looking down on top of the brain. And on this side, you can see that this is a normal brain with all the folds here. And um, on this side, you can see a large area of damage due to the stroke. Um, on this side, this is slightly further down the brain, which is why it looks different. And we have a small white area here, which is the stroke damage in this case. Now, you may think the larger the area of damage, the worse off the patient's going to be, but that's not necessarily the case. So there are some patients which have a large area of cortical damage and are still able to recover very well. And also, there are some patients which have a very small stroke, but if it's in a very important pathway linking the, uh, the motor cortex with the muscle, then they, they might be very effective. So um, we're interested in this variability and trying to use this um, use these brain imaging techniques to explore this. Um, so what you you might also have heard of grey matter and white matter. Um, now you can actually see this hopefully on these MRIs. So grey matter is around the outside here and is slightly darker. This is the nerve cell body. So this is where the hard work goes on. This is where the movement information is created. And then these white, these paler white fibers in between are all the pathways connecting them up. So sending messages between lots of different areas and sending information down the spinal cord. And we can look at um, these white matter pathways using a technique called DTI, um, which I'll go on to show you now. Past this one, there we go. Okay, then this is a bit fun. So this is not a psychedelic property of some kind. This is actually someone's brain. And um, the colors aren't just very beautiful, but they're also informative. So, like I said, these are the white matter pathways, and the different colors represent different directions of pathways. So, red is left to right, green is front to back, and blue is up and down. Um, and so, just look again. Um, we can see all the different, there's thousands and thousands of different connections between all these different areas, and they're sending messages down um, the spinal cord to the muscles as well. Um, so for our stroke patients, we want to know, just for the primary motor cortex, that really important area, what pathways are coming from here. So, okay, so this uh, is also for you. Uh, these are the pathways coming from the primary motor cortex in each hemisphere and going down um, into the spinal cord. And what we want to know with, with um, uh, stroke patients is how much are these pathways damaged. Um, so if we go to the next one. So this is an example of the same pathway again. So this is the, the pathway coming from the primary motor cortex down into the spinal cord. And then this is the area of stroke damage for this individual patient. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of overlap between these pathways. And this may have some implications about how much this person is able to recover. Um, so as you can see, these images are both very beautiful and also very informative for us. Um, and linking art and science even further, the new uh, cover of the band Muses album is actually a DTI uh, picture, so you can see that they enjoy the beauty if they don't understand what the directions mean, maybe, but still. Um, so there we go. The, if you want more information on the Stroke Association, you can go to the um, the Stroke, the Stroke Association website, and if you want to know more about our research, you can follow us on Twitter at Lord Lab. Thank you very much.